Welcome back, DJ Shifty here at DubSpot for part two of this three-part tutorial series. The first part was a routine, and in the second part here, I'm gonna talk about the nerdiest thing I can possibly think of uh, involving Tractor. If you find more nerdy things that I'm going to show you, please email me at shifty at dubspot.com. I like the nerdy. Uh, so what I'm gonna talk about is how to map using MIDI, how to map LEDs and lights on your MIDI controller, and then I'm gonna go into the wonderful mystical world of modifiers. Using buttons on your controller rather than to control a specific function, you use it to change the state of the program so you can get other buttons to do more than one thing. You'll notice I'm sporting my playoff beard. Uh, if you're watching this video at home, facial hair is uh, encouraged uh, but not required. So let's get right into it. To work with a, a mapping, I'm going to go to the Preferences screen, which is the gear icon up on top here. Give it a little click a -roo. I'm going to go to Controller Manager down here. And I've actually made uh, a, new, a new mapping called Pretty Machine, because the whole purpose of this is to make machine pretty. Beyond the pretty factor, your goal here when you're mapping LEDs is to get information about what's going on in the program without having to look at the screen. So if I have a cue point set on a, on a song, it would be nice to know just by looking at my controller without having uh, to be over here looking at the computer. So step number one, the very first thing I want to do is have the button which I have controlling cue point one, which is this button right here. So if I play this, so this button here is, getting, is triggering cue point one. But right now this button isn't telling me anything about whether or not I actually have a cue point. I just have to know the song or remember it. So I have this button controlling cue point one, and wouldn't it be nice if this button also displayed whether or not I had a cue point set on this particular song. So to map an LED, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to add out. It's been sitting there staring at you, mocking you. Now it's time to finally use it. Add in, by the way, as, as we should know, is what you use to set uh, an assignment on the controller, as in, I hit a button, something happens. You would do that in add in, but to have something happen on the controller itself, I'm gonna go to add out Q loops, hot Q1 state. And what you'll find when you navigate these menus here is that there are all sorts of different options as far as what can be displayed on the controller that you're using. So I have my hot Q1 state, I'm gonna make the assignment deck A. Now here's the part that's uh, slightly uh, cumbersome, uh, that's a great, word and words with friends, cumbersome for everyone who plays that game out there. I guess there are no Z's or X's, so it isn't a great word, but it's a solid word. Take note. So the thing that's kind of annoying, when you're mapping an add-in, you can do learn and actually hit the button. It doesn't work that way currently uh, with add-out. You have to actually go and find amongst these menus like either the note or the control change that corresponds to that particular button. So what you have to do is you look uh, at the button that you mapped as far as controlling the cue point, in this case up here. Uh, and we look and we see map to channel one, note C1. So what we're gonna do then is in this hot cue one state, we're gonna go to channel one, note C1. LED output, you can, you can just leave this stuff uh, for this particular thing, um, but let's, let's have a look now. Um, so th this, this should do the trick. So now if I load in this song, Boom, boom, we got a light. Um, and notice I didn't have to hit anything or trigger anything. As soon as a track was loaded in and it was shown to have a cue point, that light corresponded uh, and, and showed us exactly what we wanted. If I went and grabbed uh, a different song, uh, let's go over here, and I'm gonna bring it in. And what I'm gonna do is, let's say I have, I have my first cue point here. Let's say I delete this cue point. Oh, because it's locked, so I'll turn off the grid, go to Q, and I'll delete it. The light goes away. So we no longer have to look at the program to understand what's going on uh, with, with the cue point. If we delete it in the program, it'll correspond to that here. If there is a cue point, we'll see it. Same thing if we go back here and we set this cue point. Let's make it a grid. As soon as it happens, boom, the light comes back on. And it works uh, pretty much the same way with any other uh, kind of LED. What you're looking for are things that indicate button state. So in this case, we're looking at hot Q1 state. If I was uh, working with, say, the effects, uh, whether or not a particular effect was on or off, let's, e let's even have a look at that. At, I'd go to add out, let's say effects group. 
effect one on, and that's all you'd have to do. Effect one on, and it would automatically start uh, to mirror the state with the LEDs themselves. LEDs are fun. Uh, on my own mapping, I, I like it because I don't like to be glued to, to the computer. I like to look at the computer as little as possible. And, and also, it's nice to have a bunch of flashing lights. Okay, we got it. LEDs, you good out there? High five. <laughs> Fist bump. <laughs> Actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't like that. But, but if you do, that's okay. All right, so let's, let's, change, let's, change, let's change gears a little bit. So that's sort of step one on our journey of advanced mapping, mapping the LEDs. Let's also look at uh, modifiers now. So a modifier is a button that when you either hold it or you press it, it can actually give you more options as to what a particular button or a particular knob does. In other words, a modifier uh, gives you more range for what your controller can do by sort of opening up multiple mapping possibilities for a single button or a single knob. Um, the first uh, sort of modifier I want to look at and here's, here's my goal, is I want to also be able to delete my cue points on the controller. And so what I'm going to go for is mute. And what I want to have happen is that when I hold mute and hit the cue point, it will delete the cue point. Um, so in this case, the modifier is mute, meaning what I want to have happen is when this modifier is held, hitting this gives us the function of, delete, of deleting the cue point. When I release and I hit the same button, it'll just trigger the cue point. So that's our goal here for this first mapping. So to do this, we're going to go to Controller Manager, we're going to do Add In, and we're going to go to Modifier. Uh, so in, in Tractor, you get eight modifiers, and these are buttons that you can assign that, that give you this sort uh, of function. Me, personally, I like to use uh, these buttons on the side here, uh, Mute, Pad Mode, all this kind of stuff. So for Modifier 1, I'm going to hit Learn. I'm going to hit mute. I'm going to make the assignment will definitely be global type of interaction. I'm going to make it a button. And the interaction mode, I'm going to make hold. And when I hold it, I'm going to set it to value 1. Now, what's sort of confusing here um, is that these button options here, uh, these don't necessarily correspond to like specific values of things uh, that can happen in the program. It's not like when you map a hot queue state and you're mapping to hot queue 3 or hot queue 4. Pretty much the way it works is for each modifier, the button can have eight values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And what that pretty much means is when this button is in one of these different states, one of these eight different states, a different thing can happen in the program. This is all kind of uh, a little uh, convoluted, but it'll make sense, I think, when we do the example. So we're going to do add in modifier 1, and we're going to assign it to be this button, and we're going to set to value 1. But this really could have been anything. It could have been like 7 or something like that. You'll see then when I hold it up on top, this 1, modifier 1, changes to 7. Uh, but just, just because 1 is the loneliest number and needs some love, we'll, we'll make it work up here. So I hold this, you'll see the modifier state changes to 1. Now what this means now is that if we make a mapping, you'll notice that in mapping details, we have these options, modifier conditions. And we see we have our different modifiers and then values. So what this means is for a particular mapping that we make, your assignment will only happen when the modifier has that specific value. So if I wanted to do add in, and I wanted to make it so holding mute and hitting this button deleted the cue point, what I would do is I go to queue loops, delete hot queue, Learn and hit this button. There it is. Deselect type of controller button. We'll make it a direct device A button options set to value 1. Uh, now the last step here to apply the modifier is we would do modifier 1 equal to 1. This means it's only when modifier 1 is equal to 1 that this particular assignment will delete the hot queue. So if we're not holding it and I hit this and I hit the button, it's not going to delete the hot queue. But if I hold it and press it, boom, gone. And we can actually see this from the LED display. To make that cue point come back, all I have to do is hit the pad. We see the light again. I hold mute. And notice what's happening here on the modifier state. As soon as I'm holding it, I hit it gone. You'll notice that if I'm holding mute and then I hit this button again, it will still make the cue point. Uh, so what's important when you're working with modifiers is you not only have to have the condition 
for what you want to happen, meaning what we wanted to happen was we hold mute and we hit the cue point and we wanted it to, to go away and that worked. What you also have to do is consider the situation when it's not being pressed. You need to make sure that this button is only triggering the cue point when you're not pressing the mute button. So what that means is we have to go back to select set store hot cue one and we have to make modifier one equal to zero. So that when we hold it, this button will only delete it and when we release, this button will only trigger it. So that's sort of one of the things that you have to be on your toes about with modifiers is you have to account for both the situations when you're holding it and the situations when you're not holding it. So that's certainly one of uh, the more easy examples uh, I can think of. It, it's holding the button changes what happens. You can also actually make it so that when you hit a particular button, it's more of a toggle so that you hit it and all the buttons do something else. Let's do that really quickly. So what we're going to have happen is, here's the goal, when I hit pad mode, all these buttons are going to do different things. Uh, that's our goal. Now what's a bit taxing here is that you not only have to account for uh, what all the controls are going to be, meaning when you hit the button what's going to happen, you also want to account for all the LEDs, meaning when it's in this state over here, the LEDs will show whatever you want it to, and when it's back over here, it'll show the cue points like we had it. So here's, here's what we have to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to add in. Uh, we're going to make a new modifier. I'm going to do learn. I'm going to hit this pad mode. Button. Now, you'll notice that there's no toggle here, uh, and it would be nice to have a toggle, meaning like you hit it once and it's one thing, you hit it again and it goes back. And there's actually a way you can sort of make your own toggle going on. So what you, what you would do is you'd make it direct, set to value 1, and then you'd make the modifier condition modifier 2 equal to 0. In other words, when it's in 0 and you hit it once, it'll switch. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this mapping, hit learn, hit the same button, deselect, set this to value 0, and make the modifier condition 1. So if we look up here now at modifier 2, I hit it once, it goes to 1, I hit it again, it goes to 0. I hit it once, it goes to 1, so on and so forth. So that's a way you can kind of get a toggle happening. Like I said, we have to account for all the different situations. So the first thing we're going to do with these LEDs and the hot cues is we're going to go to our, where we set our hot cue, and we're going to now make it modifier 2 equal to 0. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go to hot cue 1 state, modifier 2 equal to 0, and we'll even go to delete hot cue, modifier 2 equal to 0. It's, it's a lot. We're not, we're not mess I'm even going to put my hat on backwards. It's getting so serious. I only do this for the most serious situations. Uh, you know, trials, uh, fancy dinner parties, that's when I go hat backwards. So, okay, so we've accounted for the, for the situation we had before. Let's make it so that when this button is, is pressed, that, it, that this button up here that we had mapping the cue point, instead what it's going to do is it's going to launch a sample. So first things first, let's load in a, a sample. I recommend the Shifty Whisper. Shifty. It's good for any occasion. Well, mostly creepy occasions, but uh, any occasion it can work too. Uh, so I come over here, I go to Preferences, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do add in sample deck and let's do slot start stop. Let's do learn. Let's hit the same button. Let's make it direct. Let's set to value 1. By the way, anytime you see 0 and 1 as your button options, 0 is uh, typically off and 1 is on. Assignment. Sample deck 3, slot 1, and then we're going to go to modifier 2, equal to 1. So, I push this button once. Mo up on top here, we can see that modifier state is now changed to 1, and then when we hit this button, Shifty. now if I hit the button again, it goes to 0, and this will now be... Notice it doesn't launch my sample. 
but it does trigger my cue point. You could get even crazier and make it so that there, yeah, like I said, there are different LED things happening. Pretty much what this can do is with modifiers, not only can you get different actions happening on a button, but you can get entire different pages of functions that, that you can have. The idea is you map a button and you say when this button has been pressed a certain amount of times or you're holding it or not holding it, the other controls will do different things. Final uh, piece of warning here, account for both situations. When you're pressing the button and when you're not pressing the button or when it's in one state and when it's another because otherwise you can have some kind of like undesirable double behavior and that's just unacceptable. Okay, that was part two, LEDs and modifiers. In part three, I'm gonna do a lot of work for you. One, I'm gonna give you my own mapping. I don't think you understand what I put into this mapping. I put in blood, I put in sweat. I wept several nights just thinking about this mapping. I gave a little bit of hair. I'm not sure why, but it seemed important at the time. And I'm just gonna give this to you. So in part three, you're gonna get a link uh, to download my mapping as well as sort of like a tour. Like it's gonna be like, like MTV Cribs. I'm gonna like, you know, I'm gonna show you where the magic happens and like all my juices and things like that. Uh, so that's what you have to look for in part three. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and wanna turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings, both online, wherever you are, and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.